Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. Welcome into the next edition of the Sports Fanatic Sportscast as we're here to bring you some of the latest and greatest from the NHL as the NHL rounds out its season. And this is what we're going to be doing in the first segment of the show, talking all NHL action and who we think are the leaders to win the MVP as we're going to round out um, with an award. And then we're having later segments of the show on my channel be put out in parts, NBA close of season action, some NFL draft talk, and of course, some start of baseball talk. Um, as Andrew and I are huge baseball fans, I actually called my first game on my channel that was in four hours and 30 minutes of affair um, with the Cincinnati Reds. Good long one there. Um, but Andrew, <laughs> how how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Excited to, to do this show and uh, ready to get going here and, and dive into this thing. As, uh, we love talking about sports and ready to uh, get some conversations boiling and maybe some debates as well. Yeah. I mean, I know my one debate, instead of going into the awards first, um, I think it's more interesting for people to hear about the contenders and everything. I've been back and forth with this from the start of the season. I had Vegas, then Colorado impressed me the uh, the two shows ago when I did them with Steele. And I flipped and said, now I think Colorado is more of the favorite to get to the cup than Vegas in the West. Forget what I said two weeks ago. Um, I now think that it's, again, Vegas, who's on an eight-game winning streak. This will probably just happen, ladies and gentlemen, for the rest of the season, by the way. Just, just letting you know that. I'll go one week, I'll go, oh, look, I love Colorado. The next week, I'll go, Vegas is the best thing since sliced bread. But they are the team I picked at the beginning of the season. So for now, I'm going to ride the team I picked at the beginning of the season and say at a plus 53 goal differential, 9-1 and one in their last 10, 15-7 and seven away, which is also key. You have to be good away and an eight-game winning streak, um, Vegas Golden Knights are the favorite in the West um, to make that Stanley Cup, the trip to Lord Stanley's Cup, where their best competition, I would say, um, would be in their own division, Colorado and Minnesota, and then Arizona in fourth place is not competition for um, the their team. They're just not. So it's really just the one through three, uh, Colorado and Minnesota, who are both going to make the playoffs. But... The only one that I would say is competitive to Vegas, unless if Minnesota just has a good surprise. They've been a good surprise team. It is Colorado just on paper. In the playoffs, I feel like they're the only team that will beat Vegas if it comes down to losing in their own division. But I think they're the favorite out there um, when it comes to making the um, Stanley Cup from that West division because they're just killing it out there. Yeah, no, uh, I think I'm going to go with Colorado, though, as my pick. Um, you look at them, they're 18-4 and four at home. They have a good road record as well, 12-5. and five. And then you look at their overall record. Yeah, they don't have uh, as many wins, but they have, uh, they're have 39-4. and four, So they're the only team that has single digits, losses, and regulations still. I think that goes to uh, show a lot. They're a well-experienced team when it rides into overtime as well. And, uh, no, I like I like what Colorado has offensively, defensively, and in, in net. So I think they're a little stronger and a little quicker than Vegas is. Uh, I mean, I think it's going to be, a, obviously, a very tough battle. We'll see how it is down the stretch here. I mean, four points is obviously two games. And uh, two games in many other sports, you're not going to take into account as that many and out of the race yet. Plus, one thing I do like in Colorado's favor is they got three uh, less games than Vegas. So you can make it up there. I mean, if you win three of those games or win two and lose one in overtime, you'll take first place no matter what Vegas does. Yeah, they do have games at hand. That's a big thing to pay attention to in no other NHL season other than this particular season uh, because of the COVID uh, effect. Um, but, yeah, that's a good point. They do got games in hand. Uh, my taking from Vegas is I believe in Philip Grubauer full-heartedly. Um, I like Devin Dubnik. Um, he seems like that was a good get for Colorado. Is Devin Dubnik Robin Leonard? Hell no. <laughs> um it, like that that's kind of like he he was back in his earlier in his career but i feel like if i gave the goaltender matchup i would give that to vegas even though grubauer again with flurry is up there in the vezina race it's just you have leonard and flurry that's why i would give it to vegas where you have dubnik good long career backup great trade by colorado but he's still not um uh they have two starters let's put it that way they have two starters in Vegas. They actually have a backup in Colorado. A good one, but he's actually a backup. He's not a secondary starter. That's the other reason why I, I – that's the big reason why I just slightly lean to Vegas. 
I mean, I think they're both good, all different hands. I mean, you look at a lot of the different points. I mean, you look at Colorado, they got guys at the top of a lot of the different stat categories. And, I mean, when you – yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously depth is big, but when you get to the playoffs, usually you're not worried about that backup uh, goaltender and, and everything. So I think uh, – I mean, yeah, again, nice to have the depth if something goes wrong. But overall, it's not something too much to worry about. Usually not, but uh, odd times have happened in the playoffs when it comes to hockey, where last year the the – Vancouver Canucks did not think Thatcher Demko would be in net, and then he's the only reason they ended up going deeper into that series because he made like 97 saves. Uh, so it, it is weird. The Flyers had that goalie carousel that got them to the Stanley Cup. So so there, there are um, oddities in hockey when it comes to goaltending. Obviously, last year, the Bruins rightfully so. Whoever came at him is an idiot. But uh, Rask left for his family, and then uh, Halak had to take over. So there's different things that happen in the postseason. That could even still potentially happen this year, even though COVID's getting better. Still in the COVID age, there's still been rumors about a potential bubble playoffs instead of letting teams play in their own city. So we'll see what happens if they let it go or if they decide to do that. But, um, yeah, I see where you're coming from. I think uh, they're both depth-filled. This is just, It's going to be a grueling. If these two teams play each other, I don't think it's going to go out in less than six games. No, yeah, it's, it's probably going to be a ridiculous. Games. Yeah, this is going to, that would be a ridiculous series of those two matching up against each other. I think it's close, but clearly you can tell from what we're saying that the top two favorites in that West Division would be Colorado and Vegas, where good for Minnesota for what they've been able to do. Oh, are they ready to win the cup yet? No. <laughs> like, it's just like, 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 no offense. It's just like great for how Kirill Kaprizov, when we get into our Rookie of the Year episode, when we talk about that award, today's the MVP. I'm sure we'll go into him in more depth. But good for them to get to where they are. Definitely uh, one of the coaches, Everson, who should be considered for the Coach of the Year. But you're not there yet. It's a, you're one of those teams that's, a year or two before you're really in cup contention. Here you're in really good signs for your fans moving forward. You're great at home. You're solid on the road at 12 and 9, plus 23 goal for Retro. They're a team that's just moving in the right direction, but um, isn't going to be, unless if they become a surprise team like the Blue Jackets did in 2019, a team that you would envision going deep and deep and upsetting a very good team. Yeah. Not without question. But. Now we can move into the hard one. Who in God's creation is the Stanley Cup favorite in the Discover Central division? Uh, so uh, we have the two Florida teams and the Florida Panthers led by, well, not really led by, having goaltender Sergei Bobrovsky on their team and also having Chris Dreger help their team and then Spencer Knight that got his first win the other night. Led by Bobrovsky would be wrong because he's been adequate at best. Um, Tampa Bay has a plus 32 goal differential with 62 points. Clearly has the deepest team on paper, if you count between Florida, Tampa, and Carolina, but does not have the best performing team this year, three points back. And the goal differential of Tampa's a plus 32 to Carolina's best in the division, a plus 38. Um, they're a little bit better than them. And Carolina's been hot in the last 10 at 6-2-2. Two, and two. Tampa's back at 500. They've been a little bit uh, cold recently on this one uh i'll let you get the first dibs but what team are you leaning towards when it comes to that central which is by far the toughest to pick if you were to pick a stanley cup favorite out of that division i gotta go with the Tampa bay lightning um i think experience is big they've been there before they've done it before i think carolina is probably one of the most surprising teams in the nhl this year um in all honesty i, I do love Brabowski there in, in goal We'll see if he's able to keep it up. Obviously, coming off that down year he had last year, but he seems to be playing a lot better than he did in this previous season. So I'd pick Florida second, then the Panthers, and probably Carolina uh, third there. I just think, again, Tampa Bay has been there before. They've done it. I'm not too worried. They played 500 maybe in the last 10, but overall they've had a very successful season. I mean, you look at the 62 points they've had, and uh, you throw that in two other divisions, that'd be winning the division. So we'll see what happens there. And, and again, when, when you have guys and players in, in what they have, and the goaltending's always strong, their, their depth's always strong. Uh, I, I'd fail to see. Uh, I fail to see if, if why why I shouldn't have them as my favorite still. And I get it. Again, they're in third place, but don't get me wrong. I'm not going to be surprised. And I, I can sit here and say I think Tampa Bay would probably still win this division. It's all said and done. 
Yeah, it's only three points. Yeah, they still have a good, uh, ample opportunity to win the division. Um, as for Bob, he's brought his stats back up. Um, they look good in terms of if you watch him in game eyesight wise, he still leaves stuff to be desired in terms of what he was in Columbus to what he is in Florida. But uh, he's looking better. Is he worth ten million dollars now? That's the big. That's the big issue. Um, that that's that's all it is. You paid a goalie ten million dollars. You didn't even need to, because you had one of the better prospect goalies that won his debut in Spencer Knight. You didn't expect Trigger to be this good, so that you can't really use that one. But he ended up being this good and played twenty games. Bob only played twenty six. Where if Bob was playing like Bob, those numbers would be like forty some games to ten for. Trigger because when Bob was playing great in Columbus, you wouldn't sit him. Where in Florida now, it's we need to make sure we sit this guy so he actually plays better. So it's a little bit. But that different. kind of helps him overall. Kind of, but he's has. It's kind of like Bob's always been one of those. You have to have him in the right mindset type guys. You could kind of tell like that when he was here, but then he got traded. Columbus and Torch did wonders with him. And now in Florida, they're doing solid with him, but not as good as it seemed Tortorella and his staff could kind of hone him in. So it's a good idea to rest him more. It just seems like, is he ever going to be worth what you paid him for his contract down? Will he Uh, produce as a goaltender fine average like in the league? Yeah. But will he be worth an an elite contract? As of this year, he's not because he wouldn't even be. I mean, if they want to stay in the cup, I think it's worth it. If they're able to get there, yeah, um, that that would be worth it. But you will have some people, I guarantee you, that argue Drigger had more to do with it than Bob. So it, it's going to depend when it comes to the end of the season since their games are so close and Bob has won games based off of Florida's offense more than um, Drigger has early on in the season too. So it's interesting. I like Bob here. I liked him in Columbus. I haven't liked what I've seen from him as much in Florida. But um, if he's able, but it it has known sometimes goalies just go back to their old shelves in the playoffs. Maybe he'll do that. So yeah, you're right. If they win a cup, then it is going to balance itself out. Nobody cares about a contract. Um, once you win a Stanley Cup, when it comes to that point, uh, my team though, I would have to agree with you just because of the deepness of their team has to be Tampa to repeat. They got Kucherov coming back for God's sakes in the damn postseason. Their team's already stacked. And then Nikita, Nikita Kucherov is going to walk in like that Seinfeld episode. I'm back. <laughs> and you're just, <laughs> hey, you're just going to be like, oh, great. Well, we lost, guys. It's been nice knowing you this season. I'll see you next October. <laughs> like, like, the, the, it's just not going to be fair when you have the Vezina uh, goaltender there, potentially. Um, there's other guys competing with them this year. But the potential Vezina goaltender in uh, Andre Vasilevsky down there. And then you also are just proceeding to say, yeah, by the way, one of the best players in the NHL that was one of the best scorers in the league in recent history um, when he was last healthy is just going to randomly decide he's coming back in the postseason. And it's like, hmm, okay, well, this is going to be interesting. Um, So, yeah, they're definitely a good team. Um, Vasilevsky's a workhorse. I do think the key thing for Tampa going forward is, though, you do have to eventually get a backup. Because Vasilevsky is the definition of a workhorse. Like, like he's literally like your ace pitcher, basically, in baseball, which is not always what you want with your goaltender. Usually you want to be able to rest them more. Their backups only play nine games. Um, I think Christopher Gibson's played one, but their backups leave a lot to be desired. The more McElhaney's a good guy to have in the room, NHL journeyman, but not a good goaltender anymore. So I will say, the Pan- I was surprised. I say they got the game of the night tonight, the Panthers. Do they? Oh, are they on NBCSN, you mean? Uh, it's on ESPN Plus, but I just mean it's Carolina versus uh, Panthers, Hurricanes and Panthers. So if you're just looking at importance-wise, that's probably the game of the night um, for, for these teams tonight. I mean, Maple Leafs, Jets should be pretty good, but I, I mean, we're just talking while we're in the Central Division, and obviously we just talked about how close this division race is. I mean, this game could decide late in the season. So that's definitely one if you're a big hockey fan to check out on there. Yeah, no, that's definitely a good game to check out. I definitely agree with that. Um, we can move now into um, – we'll go to the Scotia North first since I'm going to be pissed off talking about the last division we'll get to. So, 
Uh, we'll go to the Scotia North first before I rail on my team. Um, so we have the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, Winnipeg Jets, and Edmonton Oilers, who would probably maybe Montreal. Uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't really consider them a cup contender, though. They're plus four. They're working their way back in the standings. But I would say just those top three. And in my eyes, it's really good for Edmonton. They have Dryside on McDavid, who are great points guys. Barry's doing good with Darnell Nurse. Do they have a deep enough lineup in my eyes to win a whole cup? No. But could Connor McDavid and Dryside will carry you to the cup? Probably. So they're an interesting team. Um, Winnipeg actually has a deeper lineup. Good three lines. Toronto has a pretty deep lineup, still suspect what their defense will look like. This division is really, I'm very suspect what any of their defenses will look like outside of the Canadian division. Because all of these teams, unless if you're the Canadians, um, play a lot of run and gun and don't have the most steady honed in defense. So I, I feel like no team in the North <laughs> personally <laughs> is really a cup favorite until I see how they do out of the North Division because it's so much more running gun. There's just not really – Toronto tried to make their defense better, which they did, but it's still – that's only playing in your North Division. How's it going to do outside? Winnipeg's defense has played all right. Edmonton's is really meh. Mike Smith's played pretty good um, as a veteran. Will that continue into the playoffs? Uh, if I had to pick somebody, honestly, I'm not picking Toronto because they're the Mets of hockey. They're just going to disappoint you to no avail to, to all avail. No offense, Maple Leafs fans, but that's just the way it usually happens lately. Yeah, I, I'm just going to by default uh, ride with because I like their lineup. They're still a plus uh, 24, uh, six and three in their last ten. They're good on the uh, road, actually better on the road. Oddly enough, at 16 and eight and 11, seven and two at home. Um, but the Winnipeg Jets, um, I'm going to just go with by default because they got Hellbuck. They got a good team. Toronto also has concern at goaltender. You brought in Riddich, who's been struggling. You have Campbell, who's an injury risk, but it's been good. And then you have um, Anderson, who's somewhere um, trying to come back from injury. So it, that's a huge concern. You have one of the best goalies in hockey with Winnipeg and Connor Hellbuck, another guy up there for the Vezina every year. Mike Smith, with how he's playing this year, might be up there as an old guy. That'll be a great story. But I'm going to ride with um, Winnipeg on this one just by default. Do I think they have a great chance to win? No. But just by, just by default <laughs> of the Canadian division, I'm going to go with Winnipeg as my team if I had to pick one to win the Stanley Cup. Like you, I think it's pretty close, but I'm going to lean in a different direction. I think if you're looking at a couple different things, I'm going to, by default, lean towards Edmonton, another third-place team, which is funny. But I think the division's that close as it is right now. Point differentials are very close. Um, you, you combine uh, home and away, that's also extremely close. And I, the reason why I like Edmonton is I think when you look at these teams, who's got the best player? And I think Connor McDavid uh, is the best player in this division. I think uh, the way he gets help from other guys, too, on his team, I think not only that, they, they have another go-to guy there to um, dry soil. Two feet, two feet to, yeah, dry soil. And I think, or not think, they are the top two guys in points, McDavid and dry soil. So I think, again, that's going to be uh, pretty key there. They don't have to rely on one guy while I think other teams do. And like you said, yeah, some of the goaltending is pretty good. And don't get me wrong, Toronto's got other good players as well. But sometimes I feel like, they lean too much on Matthews, and this is where Edmonton's going to be, in the, uh, in my opinion, if they played each other, a small favorite, just because they can lean on a lot more other guys, I think, on that team than just one guy rather than try to carry them. And I think, again, we talked about depth earlier. I think that's where another big thing here comes into, into play is the depth of Edmonton and what they're able to do. And like you said, the defense is kind of all around with some of these teams. Um, so I think, again, it goes to show where McDavid – and Dressone and a lot of these Edmonton scores are going to have the advantage in, in a game. Uh, it's maybe a, a, a big series like that. Yeah, yeah, I feel like Edmonton will, unless if Smith still stands on his head, which he can, but it depends how your defense plays against these other teams. Have to outscore guys, but yeah, I could see that because they're definitely the most fun team to watch out of these others, where their team, their depth is different. Their depth goes more based off of because they have Nurse and Barry on defense who also score where um, Winnipeg's goes more towards the third line, but then not having as much scoring from their back end. So, yeah, it, it depends on what you look at to see what you think will be able to prevail there, where Smith on the season is a 2-3-7 at the age of 39. 
in 25 games at a 921 and a 16 and 5 record. So who said age matters? Um, so age is just a number. Yeah. So um, Edmonton definitely. Yeah, I think this is just a division you really got to flip your card and just say who the heck you you think has a better chance because I don't think any of these teams, quite frankly, honestly are going to win the Stanley Cup unless if they get on a really good run and dry side on McDavid turn into the second coming of like the Legion of Doom in the playoffs. And then you're just like, yeah, this is not good for the rest of the NHL as they both have 40 points at the end of the postseason. And you're like, oh, okay. But unless if that happens, then I don't necessarily <laughs> see Edmonton winning the entire cup. But maybe being – it's still a good season for their fans moving in the same direction, get some good bottom six help in next – year got a good first two lines figure it out you got some guys maybe moving on you're having money but yeah it's a good sign they're in a good spot um I, i'll go winnipeg andrew went edmonton with that one um where when it came for the central that one we were pretty much just in lockstep by default a uh, coach of the year though definitely has to be considered for brindamore with how good he's done with Colorado, not colorado carolina again um, and then in the Honda West to recap, Andrew went with Colorado and I went with the Las Vegas, the most entertaining team in hockey when it comes to not on, well, on the ice, but also just before games. Um, when it comes to fighting, having nights fight and different things um, happen um, before a hockey game. So definitely a fun team to check out down there. OK, another division that's tough uh, between the top, probably honestly, Four, because the Rangers are going to need a lot. So, but and they're not a cup contender to make the playoffs, but they might be a playoff contender. But you could argue in the Mass Mutual East with now Ras back and how you saw from young goaltender Swayman in Boston, they could be mentioned. But I think it's more Pittsburgh, New York, and Washington to pick from. But th there is actually four you might be able to argue in this division. Um, I mean, Washington has more recently won a cup. The thing is, they have all different goaltenders. So it's not really like you I, most recently won a cup. <laughs> I think you were spot on with your first team. I think it's Boston, in all honesty. I really do. I, I think, that, like you said, these top four are really close. I, I think, like you said, Rask is back, playing pretty well. I think that's obviously been an issue for a little bit in Boston since this year. has been some injuries, and they've dealt with some different COVID protocol stuff. So I think that's been their biggest issue so far this year. And obviously – that I think that's their biggest issue going into the playoffs is are they going to be are they going to have a full roster are they going to be fully healthy I think they've kind of built a, a nice lead I mean obviously three games over the Rangers is still possible for something to happen uh, but I, I think they're going to get that spot and if not they're only two games back at first so I think they could find themselves somehow still climbing up to that top top spot in the um, division if they take care of business and obviously I, I know we've talked about it a couple times before and in, in some of our shows we've done in the past, but we got to remember the rest of this year is all against division teams. So like they're going to have the opportunities to catch Pittsburgh. They're going to have an opportunity to catch the Islanders and Washington capitals. Like the opportunities will be there for these guys to go at it. They're plus 17 point differential that they're a quick team that they're built nicely. They've always been at the top the last couple of years. And uh, I think this team, when they get clicking, I think they're clicking right now about to at least with the uh, guys coming back won five straight. So I, I think they're about to go into the playoffs pretty hot. And uh, I, I think they're my favorites out of the uh, Mass Mutual East. Yeah, well, Pittsburgh – or not Pittsburgh. Boston also has the best schedule or one of the best, at least in hockey, if you want to be coming smooth sailing hot uh, into the postseason. Because you've got Buffalo, Buffalo. Then you got two tough ones against Pittsburgh. But then you got Buffalo again. Then you got Buffalo again. Then you got New Jersey, New Jersey. The Rangers are a pretty tough team. Islanders and Washington. So your last four games are kind of tough. But in between there, you got a lot of games you should be able to win. Yeah, so, I mean, three weeks from now, we could be talking about Boston Bruins winning the division and being one of those top seeds, and we'll, we'll see what happens here. But I, I think this could be one of the most exciting uh, divisions for the playoffs, in all honesty, because I think there's going to be a lot of – not only that, I mean, you look around at some of the other leagues and divisions – some of them have kind of been mixed a little bit, so you're not used to some of those guys playing each other. So, like, if you go to the Central, like the Lightning and Stars, if the Stars were to yeah. uh, make it, or the Predators, whatever, you don't really have that 
season to season rivalry between some of those teams where if you look at the Mass Mutual East, these guys are all rivals. Like we're all used to playing each other mostly. I know Boston is usually in a different division. Yeah. But Boston, I mean Boston and Pittsburgh. Still we know, kind of not, a rival yeah, we know Boston still and Pittsburgh don't like each other. We know the Islanders and Pittsburgh don't like each other. We know the Capitals, Islanders, Pittsburgh. Like, we're used to being them in our division. They were rivals. That's what's gonna make I think this division one of the most fun to watch come playoff time just because uh, they're all going to be battling there for for teams that don't like each other already, and now you're going to throw them into these series. So I think it's going to be a fun uh, fun series to watch, especially for a lot of those games. Yeah, I think this East Division definitely has the top four where you can kind of pull from, where the others, I feel like it's more just the top three that are cup contenders. Like, like the other fourth-place teams are Nashville. I don't consider Nashville having a yeah. cup contending chance. The fourth-place team in the West is either going to be Arizona or St. Louis or maybe San Jose. Uh, and none of those teams are going to win a Stanley Cup. Um, and then and then if the Kings somehow rally and make it, they're not going to win a Stanley Cup. Um, unless if a miracle happens for them or Cal Pedersen turns into Demko and stops like a million shots um, in the postseason and just can't be beat. Um, where in the, let's see here, the North, that would be Montreal. Um, still don't consider them a cup contender. They do play a better defensive game of the Canadian team. So if I wanted to pick a fourth place team that I think could surprise in the playoffs, I would throw that to Montreal. Do I think they'll get as far as the cup? No. But it, could they surprise and actually beat a good team in the playoffs? Yeah, they would actually be the Canadian team I think could come out and play somebody else and actually kind of surprise them and go, wow, this team actually plays us pretty good on both ends. Where the other teams might not do that as smoothly. But yeah. that pretty much round out who we expected. We both agreed on two. We both went with Boston for the East, which means when John from Off the Hall Lock, Off the Wall Hockey listens to this, he's going to do a backflip and a somersault. Um, so congratulations, John. Uh, we think your Bruins uh, have the best chance to get to the uh, Cup from the Mass Mutual East here. Um, when it comes to the Discover Central, we both think that will be the Tampa Bay or the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, since Tom Brady claimed Tampa, even though the Lightning won the state in the cup recently, but you know that's not here or there. Um, then we have, we. I thought Vegas, Andrew thought Colorado. It's probably going to be one of those two teams, so one of us will be right at who's the best team, I think, uh, when it comes to that division, when it comes to the playoffs. And then the North is a crapshoot. Uh, I went with Winnipeg, and uh, Andrew went with Edmonton. So to round out our NHL talk for this week, we're going to discuss – which is going to be going right back, I think, to north of the border, to the Edmonton Oilers to discuss the MVP. Because let me tell you, if Connor McDavid doesn't win the MVP because people care about both sides numbers more when they come to MVP voting, well, guess who is going to win the MVP? The guy that's on his team. So, so either way, uh, it's going back to Edmonton <laughs> for the Hart Trophy. Because uh, Drysaddle's either going to win it for two years in a row because his offense and defense is utterly ridiculous, or McDavid's going to win it for two years in a row because his offense is good and his defense is also underrated Um, because he's actually pretty solid defensively. So I would go with McDavid just because his points have been ridiculous. 77 points in 45 games, a plus 16, 52 assists, 25 points. And this is me saying this, and people that watch my channel know this. McDavid's not my favorite player in Edmonton. Where's my where's my tablet? Hold on. This guy is my favorite player in Edmonton. <laughs> I, have, I have a case of Leon Dreisaitl. So that that that'll say it there. It's just I was all for him last year. I think he should have won it last year. He went off. This year, McDavid's going off more than him. So therefore, to be fair, I gotta go with Connor McDavid and say he should be the one to take it from his teammate this year and not the other way around. Because last year it was probably gonna be the same type thing. Um so I think it's going to come down to these two. There's other guys that can be in there, like the McKinnons of the world. Patty Kane's the only reason. Not the only reason. They have good young players as well. But the veteran reason the Blackhawks have stayed relevant. Um, but it's going to, I think, be Connor McDavid for me with Leon Dreisaitl, his teammate. Maybe being in second, sometimes you get pushed when you're on the same team. So you might see McKinnon or Kane in second just because of voters. They don't feel like putting two people on the same team sometimes at the top. But Either way, he'll be in the top three, and then you have Kane or McKinnon or somebody else probably uh, mixed into that realm. Maybe Austin Matthews, um, since he has to do too much for Toronto, even though they have a stacked team on paper. But, uh, yeah, he could potentially be in there also. But I think it would go to McDavid. No, I agree with you completely. I think he's been the best 
uh, player in the league this year. Uh, I think he had a chance to win last year, obviously, but dealt with some injuries last season. Kind of hurt his chances, I think, overall. This year, I think he's been he's been the best, and it helps to have that guy a counterpart alongside of him, helping him go that way. And it kind of reminds me of last year with baseball. I mean, you had the, the Freddie Freeman, Marcelo Zuna story, and I think that's kind of what these two are. Like, it's just you know it's probably going to help to go to one of them almost. I mean, you look at his goals, um, his top uh, – Top the NHL in points overall so far this year. He's third in goals, and then he's number one in assists, and his point differential is plus 16 for the team. So I think uh, he, I think he should win it fairly easily, in all honesty, this year. And I don't know about you, but I, I've always paid attention to some of the odds there, and he's a heavy favorite to win at this point. Um, Who's second right now, Dre, or is it somebody else? Uh, Austin Matthews. Oh, it's Austin Oka. Okay. Yeah, according, exactly according to this like article – on Covers.com, uh, it just says by cover staff, so I can't give credit to the, the person that wrote it because it says cover staff. This was released April 20th, and uh, it says odds to win the NHL MVP award. Connor McDavid minus 1,500. Austin Matthews plus 950. Um, Sidney Crosby plus 1,100. And then Patrick Kane plus uh, 1,500. Wow, so they, put Dre, they buried Dre because he's on the same t- team as McDavid. Wow, they buried him then in those odds because he's on the same team. As yeah, I don't, I don't. Again, this I don't know how. I don't know whose odds they go off. No, of. I know. I'm just saying, like they like just said, if he's gonna win it, you're gonna be nowhere near. It. <laughs> like, he's, right. he's about tenth on the list. On yeah, uh, that, has, that has to be the team. Uh, they're on the same team type of fact. That has to be. <laughs> there's no other reason why you would be able to with his stats. And I agree with those other players being up there. It's just there's no way you could reason saying unless if you was the team thing, dry Soto should not be in the top five. Yeah, and the they, only one I'm surprised is I'm surprised Crosby's that high because I know he's been like, he's a leader for that Penguins team, but if you look at like, stats, he's really not ahead in the NHL and a lot of the different stuff. So I, I'm kind of surprised to see Crosby at three, if I'm being honest. No, that's, that's, that's why I, I, I did that when you said Crosby. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Uh, where, yeah, he's doing good. He's a good defender, good on both ends. This year, I find myself complimenting Cindy Crosby a little bit more than I'd like to do in life. Um, but, um, he's been playing well this year. Uh, let's see, 52 points, 18 goals, 34 assists, plus nine. Um, so yeah, he's been doing good, been the leader for their team. If you want to look at it from that perspective and not as much from the output perspective, then sure. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at it from team to team basis, but with how nuts McDavid's going, I think he just has to get it. And even Dre's having a better season than Crosby, um, where Crosby would be in my top 10 if I did one, if I had a hard trophy vote. I don't know if he would, I would have to look into it more nicely. He might be my fifth person, but I feel like if he's in my top five, he would be my fifth person. And I don't even know if he would be in my top five. I would have to look more in depth because you got Kane, you got Kane, then you also have Matthews who would go next and then it might be um him there or i might have someone else if i look into a nicer like there might be somebody else i look into it and go i think they need to be above where i just i just don't really i look into it for the top guys and the guys that i think those are the guys i looked up before this i didn't look up everybody around the league who i think would potentially um be in the top 10 and surprisingly finish like sometimes a guy that's good on both ends mark stone some voter will be like, I think he should be in the top 10, which he's a great player, but uh, for the hard trophy, it's going to be hard for a two-way player that scores 65 to 70 some points to uh, win it. But yeah, and then, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, you cut, cut out. I thought you were done. No, I was going to say uh, you can go because if you have any closing thoughts, that about wraps up our NHL talk for the week. So whatever um, closing thoughts you had um, for this week. Yeah, I would say going off uh, my final point on odds since we're talking about division winners, the best Stanley Cup overall uh, odds is uh, Colorado Avalanche. They have number one uh, out, of, out of everyone in the league. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, but we'll, we'll see kind of what happens. And if we want to go through, I'll, go, I'll name the, the first one from each division real quick. Uh, it would be the Avalanche, the uh, who was it? The, the Knights are third overall, but the uh, Lightning – are two, so they'd be the first in their division. Bruins are first in uh, was in our division, and then Toronto is the first in that division. Okay, that makes sense. It's just Toronto's so disappointing, and it's literally the mess of hockey that um, <laughs> usually until they uh, 
usually until they uh, <laughs> actually uh, get going and doing something. Um, I'm not going to say, yeah, I think they're going to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Uh, until I start seeing something. They, yeah. need, to prove, they need to prove me um, wrong before I start betting on the Toronto Maple Leafs. I but, said things like that. Yeah, but we uh, thank you all for uh, joining um, the hockey segment. Is we're gonna uh, cut it out now because Steel always gives a word to our sponsors from the K Nine Resort. I'm um, in here, so we'll just hand it over to them, and then we'll come back with some good action. On uh, we'll go to the NBA next, if that's Andrew's cup of tea. Uh, it was his birthday yesterday. Uh, we'll dive into basketball next. Is the next thing. So everyone, have a great, safe, and pleasant day, and thank you for uh, joining for part one of our hockey recap.